morning, good morning, rising live, you guys, rising live, rising live, rising live. Hey there, Crown Nation. Um, this is early for me uh, <laughs> compared to um, compared to when I get on. I'm sorry, you guys. Um, but rising live, you guys, rise and live, and I just came out of. You know, like a prayer um, moment. I just came out of a prayer moment and rising live, you guys. Rising live. And as I was praying and as I was, you know, just, you know, giving the God the best of what I had this morning, right? It's so crazy because something came to me. And so as I was. You know, walking around my home and preparing for my client to come. Um, I just like to set my intentions for the day. And I like to set the atmosphere and I like to set the tone of what it is that I want for my day. What I want my day to consist of. And um, hopefully you guys can hear me. Uh, good morning to the viewer that's watching and the viewers that will watch. Um, I was just sitting here and I just was like, Lord... I said, dang, I said, this is your home. This is your home. This is your home. And in that raised a question to me, for me to ask you all, um, have you guys, if God was to come or, or not even if he was to come, does God feel welcome in your home? You know how when you go, you have company, you have guests, and different things like that. You have guests, you have company, you know, um, or whatever the case might be. But have you ever gone somewhere where you haven't felt comfortable uh, in the comfort of somebody else's home? Like, they didn't make you feel welcome. They didn't greet you at the door. They did not, you know, offer you anything to drink, you know. Um... Even in a place of business, you can go somewhere and feel unwelcome. And you can say, I'm not coming back there again. And so, I wanted to raise a question to you guys. Does God feel welcome in your home? Or do you think God feels welcome in your home? And guess what? Honestly, when you ask that question, you can legit get the answer to it. Because God will let you know, like, I mean, he will let you know, like, what hinder you? What's hindering you now? He will send warning before destruction. He will give you uh, tools and he will put people in place, you know, to, to, to get you to a place where you understand that, that there is no room for me in your life. There is no room for me in your house. There is no room for me in your heart. There is no room for me in your mind. You know, there is no room for me. Not just the... And, and that's a good a good one. There's no room for me in your heart. And there's no room for me in your mind. Like, what you give God, you have to be, and I am more than grateful. You better be grateful that he doesn't give you what you give him. And, um, you know, I just was like, Lord, you know, um, I know I get up here, I be... I, I, I be on Amp 1000. I'm on Amp 1000 and, you know, I'm dancing a little bit and I'm, you know, I'm moving around and I'm getting my vibrations up, you know, I'm trying to, not even trying to, vibing off of love because that's the highest vibration that you can vibe on. But then as I was listening to the words uh, of the speaker on this morning, you know, um, they were talking about the vibration of heaven. And I said, God, I said, if yep, I said, if the vibration of heaven can rest in my home, oh my gosh, how awesome that would be. Like, you know, I get up here and I do so many things and I, I talk about vibing off of love and love being the highest frequency that you can vibe on. But could you imagine, you know, heaven being the frequency of your house? Could you imagine heaven being the frequency of your existence in this moment? Oh my gosh, like the purity of that word. Um, it comes with so much, 
so much uh, so much weight, you know, um, because it holds so much value to me. Heaven holds so much value. God holds so much value. Um, and I just I just had to throw that out there, you know, like if God was in front of you right now, could you say that you made him feel welcome in, in your home? And guess what? The funny thing about it is, it's the home that he's given you. He was the one who blessed you with the home in the first place. He was the one who blessed you with the church in the first place. He was the one that blessed you with the husband. He was the one that blessed you with the job. He was the one that blessed you with the child. He was the one that blessed you with the wife. He was the one that blessed you with the means to be able to do what it is that you do. Does he feel welcome in your home? And not just your natural home, but your spiritual home. What is your spirit looking like? What are you vibing off of? Um, and it is so important and it's so paramount for us to really ask ourselves these questions because we go in our everyday and we give so much, so many other things uh, attention. And sometimes God just requires five minutes of our time just like he he only asks for 10 percent of our our increase or our earnings you know um it's the same way and people have their own personal uh prenotations of what these things mean especially uh paying your tithes and your 10 percent but the thing about it is you know god knows what's what and he knows who's who and um, that's one thing that I can appreciate. That's one thing that I can, I can, I can, I can rest on. And um, I really want you guys to ask yourselves. I really want you to ask yourselves: Do I make time for God? Have I made time? Do does He have a space or a place in my house? Does He have a space or a place in my heart? You know, this could be taken in a literal or a spiritual sense. You know, and um, sometimes I have to sit down with myself and reevaluate my surroundings, reevaluate my spirit. I have to check in with me so that I'm able to check in with God, that He may be able to check me. You know, because sometimes I I might get I might get out of out not out of pocket, but I might get a little sway, but not sway because I'm weak minded, but sway just because I need a little bit more of a uh, a little bit more discipline or a little bit more you know this a little bit more wisdom or a little bit more understanding or a little bit more knowledge and the thing about it is I'm okay with acknowledging that sometimes I need a little bit more you know and um you know and or, but the thing the key is is knowing checking in with you and checking in with God knowing that you need a little bit more you know, need, knowing that you need that push just a little bit more. That you need that talking to just a little bit more. And guess what? Once you get it, you got it and it's good. You know, and God will let you know, hey, thank you for making room for me. Thank you for taking time out to get to know, to, 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 to. No, thank you for taking time out to check in with you, to check in with me. Because if you are, if God is abiding on the inside of you the way that you want him to or the way that he, he deserves I promise you, when you check in with him and you check in with you so that the Spirit of God can abide on the inside of you and flow freely, man, the vibes that you will be vibing off of because the power of life and death is in the power of the tongue simply. Um, I can't say that I died every eye and I can't say that I crossed every T because I don't. I will tell you that I have a story and a testimony, you know, um, just like everybody else. But my goal is to have God pleased with what I do and say. And I can't tell you that everything that I do and everything that you say may be impressive to you. It may not be impressive to you, but I'm not here to impress you. I'm not here to impress people. I'm here to to represent Christ well and to some people I may to some people I may not but at the end of the day my prayer is that I've allowed God in so much that people can see him and not just see me that people can see the vibration of Christ on my life and in my in, in my vortex and in my spirit and in my space and in the atmosphere that they are able to touch him and feel him just either through something that I said a smile or a hug or something 
so that the people can know that I've been with him, you know. And um, I can honestly say sometimes I don't read my word like I should. You know, I'm doing I'm I'm doing better. Uh, but there was a point in time in my life where I actually sat there. No, not sat down. I took my word with me every single place that I went, y'all. I, when I say every single place, I mean I take my word with me every single place that I went. And when I say, I'm not talking about that word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. I'm talking about I took my Bible with me everywhere that I went until God started revealing to me and he started showing showing me that that word had I had in my heart that I may not sin against thee and when he started showing when he started showing me that I didn't have to carry my bible with me but I had to carry the word within me it, it did such a so it, it was such a difference because not only was I just reading the word and carrying the word for not the people to see but for my own personal reasons I was carrying that word and when I was carrying that word what happened was you know uh uh I had it you know and it could have been perceived that I was living it but when I had the word down on the inside of me it sparked something inside of you so now I'm not just carrying the word tangibly but I'm carrying the word in my heart that I might not sin against you he didn't say that I may be perfect he said, so I might not sin. He said that I might not. He didn't say, so that might not meant that I may. But guess what? If I have the word abiding on the inside of me and if I have time for God and I made space for him, it's on the inside of me and, and my thoughts and my actions will go parallel to what's already on the inside of me. What's on the inside of me is the word of God and the word of God that's on the inside of me shall come out from what's in so what whatever is in always comes out whatever is up always comes down you get what i'm saying and so he showed me like you don't have to carry the word with you all the time although having the bible in your hand is awesome but the goal is is to have the word in your heart that you may not sit against him and so i just was like god you know wow you know, and that comes with spiritual maturity. And that's how you build up your spiritual momentum and your spiritual stamina because you start to challenge yourself to not just say the word, but to live the word. And um, I can honestly say there's been many times in my life where I've ran away because I'm like, God, I don't want the pressures of um, the pressures of, or the responsibility of somebody looking to me in a high regard. And the thing about it is how many times have we diminished ourselves and the way that God sees us because we weren't ready. And I just want you to know that in God, whether you're in God or not, certain things you're just never going to be ready for. I am a mom of six. And I know what it entails to have a baby at this point in my life. I just had Ruth. Guess what? I was not prepared. <laughs> I was not prepared. Like, I prepared as as I was going through. Like, it became easier. But, like, you can never prepare or wrap your mind around the birthing process. Simply because every experience is different. Just like every pregnancy is different. Just like everybody's visions are different. Everybody's goals and aspirations are different. Sometimes it's a different process. And so you got to wrap your mind around why God chose you. And then you got to allow him to choose you and to use you accordingly to where he wants to take you to. And if you say, Lord, I surrender all. I surrender my life. I surrender my heart. Guess what? He's going to say, oh, you surrender. Huh? I hear that you said that you surrender. You said it out of your own mouth that you surrender all. All to thee. My blessed Savior, I surrender. So you said that you, okay, so I'm going to test you on that. And so when God starts doing things like that, you have no choice but to welcome him in. You got to make space and you got to make time for him. Because when you make time and space for him, whether it's through the word, whether it's through song, whether it's through dance, whether it's through meditation, whether it's through, um, you know, just some quiet time. You know, when you make time for him, you know, and you welcome him in, 
He can freely give. You allow God access to freely give unto you what it is that you need. And sometimes he goes above and beyond and don't just give you what you need or give you what you want. He gives you He gives you an overflow. He gives you a plethora of options. He gives you an abundance of resource, an abundance of harvest, an abundance of Whatever, because he's like, oh, that's my girl right there. Oh, that's my kid right there. Because I'm a king's kid. And I'm a part of a royal priesthood. And I'm a part of a holy nation. Yes, these things I believe within my heart. And so because I believe this within my heart, I have to shed that light to you guys. That you may be able to believe. I'm, I can't force you to believe. But based off of trying the spirit by the spirit, testing that spirit to see if it's of God or not and see if what they're saying adds up and if it lines up with the word then okay you might want to go in the direction that you 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 know is right you know because holiness is right all day you know I can't say that you know I'm, I'm, I'm going to be perfect but guess what I won't use that as an excuse not to do the will of God concerning my life you know, I have to still be open and I still have to be honest and I still have to check in with me. And then I still have to check in with God so that I can be checked by him. You know, because it's, it's a major thing to be checked by God. It's a major thing to be checked by God. But guess what? It's, it's very necessary. And the reason why it's necessary, when he checks you, it's not always a bad checking sometimes it's a check i'm checking you because i need to make sure that you are on the same wavelength as i or or that you're in the vein or i need to make sure that you get what it is that i'm saying or that you get what it is that i'm trying to teach you in this moment and if by chance you don't get it you have to stop and ask yourself you know not even stop and ask yourself you got to stop and ask god god well what is it that you're trying to get me to understand what is it that you need me to know? I got up this morning to, you know, uh, just straighten up to make sure that I, everything was con conducive for my client, making my client feel welcome. And this is what we need to do for God. And in, in me doing that, it turned into, you know, me uh, listening to this word. And as I was listening to the word, that thing started just like, it just started conjuring up something in my soul. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And then as I was going on, you know, I, I, I began to pray and I began to say, Lord, like, you are welcome here. This is this, this is this is your home. This is your space. Take it over. Like, you know, uh allow anything to drop at the door that does not belong. I don't even want to come to the I don't want to come through the threshold. Drop that thing at the door before it comes inside because my thing is I don't want anything that does not serve me for my highest good in my in my space and in my energy and in my vibe. I want anything that God has for me and all things that God has for me in this moment and in this time and as to where I'm going, I want that to reign free and strong and I want to be able to accept it and receive it freely and 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 that comes with being in his presence and giving him time, giving him effort, giving him energy, making him feel welcome. And so I, I, I began to get my place, you know, straightened up for my client and making sure everything is organized accordingly so that I can service her well. And so it's so crazy because in that, you know, and in my, you know, just going and doing what I got to do and, you know, uh, praying and all that jazz, you know, I just said, God. I said, Lord, this is your home, and I welcome you here. And so some of us today need to say, God, this is your home. But don't say, Lord, this is your home, and not mean it, because he's going to put it to the test, I promise you. This is your home, and I welcome you here, God. So how the question being, I don't want to make this a long, a, a long laugh, because my client is about to come soon, too. But the question is, does God feel welcome in your home? If he was to stand before you face to face, and even if he wasn't to stand before you face to face, does he feel welcome? Can he say that I know you? Or if you die today or tomorrow, and you don't even have to die for him to say this, depart from me, I know you're not. I never knew I never even knew you. I don't want to hear those words. So for me, for me living right and living holy and 
being pleasing unto God. And that's not being perfect, but being perfected through Christ and allowing him to perfect you through his word and his way. What happens is that comes with the ability to allow him to just take the ring over your life. And I just want to be at a place where God is able to take free reign over my life. Because guess what? I know that he's going to put me to the test. Half of the stuff in my life has not gone the way that I thought. It's gone the way that apparently his plan was planned for my life. And so they say one way to make God laugh is to tell him your plans. And that is so true. But I just want you guys to know that I love you so much. Rise and live, you guys. Thank you so much, Crown Up Nation, for always tuning in. And for those who are just getting into this video, catch the replay. Play it back. Share this video to somebody. Because somebody needs to ask themselves this question. Does God feel welcome in my home? I don't know what God you serve. But I saw serve an all-knowing, an almighty, an all, a all just, an ever-present, an omnipresent, a living, an abundant, a loving, a kind, a gentle, a sovereign God, you know? And so because I serve a God that is so awesome in his way and awesome in his right, I want to share that with you guys. I don't want to force him on you because one thing that I know God is, is he is a gentleman and he forces himself on no one. And so because of that, you know, um, I don't want to force you to you know i just want to give you the vibe that i'm feeling okay i just want to i want to give you the vibe and you can either receive that or you can either not receive that but what i do know is i won't stop i won't stop and if you keep coming i promise you you'll be fed and if you be fed i promise you you'll get full and once you get full i promise you you'll be fully equipped for the task because it's not going to just be with any food because you got some food that'll make you sluggish and tired <laughs> and you get the itis and you want to go to sleep but then you have some food that revitalizes you and it gives you energy and it's live and it's living and you got this boost and you're like oh my god that's the kind of energy that i want to give you guys i love you guys so much have an amazing tuesday tuesday and i think i like going live this early um I know sometimes it changes. This is the summertime, so the kids are not in school. Things have been shifting and changing anyway. But, um, yes, I love you guys so much. Don't forget to crown up. Sing your crowns up in the comment section below. I love you guys so much. I see you and I see you. Have a blessed day. Peace.